you're watching this video because we all want to pick up distance. If you want to pick up not just five yards, but possibly 20 or even 50 yards, do not leave. I'm going to explain how to increase distance through club speed and dynamic loft with your irons. Golfers, welcome back to the channel. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel and let me know what kind of videos you want to see next. Today's video focuses on how to pick up distance with your irons, specifically focusing on how club speed and dynamic loft can improve distance. Firstly, we're gonna be talking about club speed. So we all know club speed, the faster you swing, the more potential distance you can generate. However, it doesn't matter if you don't hit it in the middle of the face or your technique is off, but you're able to possibly maximize some distance with club speed. Generally speaking, every mile an hour of club speed is approximately two, even three yards more distance. You know, that's if you're swinging 10 miles an hour faster, that's possibly another 30 yards. So I'm gonna get to testing right away with club speed. I'm gonna test from 70 miles an hour with a seven iron, 80 miles an hour, and then 90 miles an hour, and just explain the differences and how 20 miles an hour in club speed can really affect distance. Let's hit some shots. Average club speed of 70 miles an hour. I have the green set at approximately 135 yards away. That was 72. And the ball carried 128. That was 69.2. The ball carried just a touch shorter than the first one. That's 122 carry. That was 69.7. Pretty close to the right distance there. 125 carry. That was 69.2. Went about 139 yards. Felt like a good swing. That was at 72 miles an hour, and that carried just over 130. So we can see here. The ball is carrying approximately 130 yards. We can take a look at the numbers, um, but first I want to switch it over to 80 miles an hour and then also 90 miles an hour and show you those distances. 80 mile an hour club speed, I have the flag set at 160 yards away for total distance that is. Let's see if we can do 80 miles an hour. That was 78.1. Pretty good shot, might go in the hole. Oh, that was really close. So that carried 147. That was 79.6 on the club speed. Pretty close to the right distance there. That was 82.3 on the club speed. And that carried 158. Six 
78 mile an hour club speed on that one. And that one carried 148. Pulled that one just a little bit, 82.9 on the club speed. We'll carry just a little bit further. All right. So that is 80 mile an hour club speed. That's hit 90 mile an hour. Average club speed of 90 miles an hour. I have the flag set at about 185 yards. This is closer to my normal swing speed when I'm playing golf. That was 90.2. Wasn't the greatest contact though. Got it a little off the heel. That was a little better contact at least. 89.5 on the club speed. That carried about 175. And that one was really heavy. That was a bad swing. So that was a real miss hit. Toey going a little bit shorter. But you can see it still almost went 180. That one felt like I found closer to the middle of the face, which I did. 91 mile an hour club speed. That felt like I hit that one a little more solid too. 90.4 on the club speed. All right, so that one was probably about as close as it gets for my numbers. Carry 180 going 186. Let's go take a look at numbers and see the comparison on 70, 80, and 90 mile hour club speed. Time to talk numbers. And I did a really good job for you on the club speed. So you can see that my average club speed when I was trying to swing at 70 miles an hour was 70.1. 80 miles an hour was 80.1 and 90 miles an hour was 90.4. My efficiency rating also was very similar. I wasn't trying to change the loft or anything like that. So this is, this is awesome data here for us to talk about. Um, dynamic loft, we'll talk about that after we talk about these numbers, but you can see within two degrees. So that's, that's good to see. So this is a really fair test. So let's find out just exactly what kind of distance gains we were achieving when we were able to increase club speed. So first off, at 70 miles an hour, full speed of 94 miles an hour, with the golf ball carrying 126 going 140. So I wasn't far off on the 135 yard estimate um, for the distance there. Uh, if we look at 80 miles an hour, ball speed of 108, so a 15 mile an hour ball speed increase. And if we take a look here, we can see 153. So that's 27 yards further on the carry distance. Go 164, so 24 yards further total distance. And then at 90 miles an hour, the club speed was 122. So another 14 mile an hour full speed increase, so pretty consistent there. Carry distance was 176 going 187. So a 23 yard increase there on the carry distance and then yeah another 23 yards on the total distance so we're seeing here with a 20 mile an hour club speed increase so going from 70 miles an hour to 90 miles an hour i picked up 50 yards on my carry distance 126 to 176 pretty good this is why club speed is very, very important. 
Okay, so now we're going to compare dynamic loft. That was just crazy. When I increased my club speed by 20 miles an hour intentionally, the ball carried 50 yards further. That's pretty impressive. The second part of this video, it focuses on dynamic loft. So not only club speed is important, but also dynamic loft. Because if you swing really fast, but you present that club with too much loft or too little loft, you're not gonna maximize the carry and total distance. Typically, if you present more loft on the club at impact, the golf ball is gonna fly higher and shorter. If you present too little loft for your club speed, the ball is not going to carry quite as far. It might fly lower and roll out and be harder to stop on the greens. So that's important to pay attention to. So I've already hit some shots at 90 miles an hour with about a 25, 26 degree dynamic loft. I'm now going to hit some shots where I'm going to increase dynamic loft, probably in the mid 30s, mid to high 30s. That's going to be the higher dynamic loft. It's not going to feel good. It's going to fly higher and shorter. And then I'm also going to over compress the ball. Now I already compressed the ball around about 25 degrees. So getting it much lower than that is going to be more challenging. It's not going to be in the teens, but it's going to be kind of in the lower 20s. Let's hit some shots and just see what happens regarding distance. Just like club speed, loft also influences distance. So typically every two to three yards is affected by about one degree of loft. So if you're be able to present less loft on the club, the golf ball can go farther. Let's do some testing. I just discussed the numbers with an approximate dynamic loft around about 25, 26 degrees with varying club speeds. So now we're going to vary the dynamic loft. First off, I'm gonna start with around about in the, in the 30s, so a little bit higher. So we might expect the ball to go a little bit shorter. And this is a hard thing for me to do to feel like I'm kind of hanging back on it. All right, so that one, I believe it was 36 degrees on dynamic loft. As a reminder, my irons statically have 34 degrees of loft on it. So that meant at impact, my hands were slightly back. They were not more compressed. And that was 91 miles an hour. And that was 37. So this would be a player that tends to like flip at the ball and try and help the ball up in the air. Thirty-five on the dynamic loft and club speed right at ninety. Definitely don't like this feel. There's three in a row where I lost about twenty yards on the carry distance. Thirty-five degrees and ninety-one mile an hour club speed. Let's do one more. Definitely notice the golf ball is flying a lot higher. All right, so that was 35 degrees, 91 mile an hour club speed. Why don't we switch this over here now to a lower dynamic loft. So I'm going to hit some shots here where I'm going to actually compress the ball. So I'm gonna feel like it impact that that shaft's leaning forward a little bit more than what I'm used to. So we'll see. And now when you're doing this, you don't want to overdo this if you don't have enough club speed. Otherwise the ball will never get in that optimal carry window. But because I'm swinging at 90 miles an hour, it can be beneficial to lower that dynamic loft. I think you're about to see that. Definitely hit the screen quite a bit lower. So that was at 20 degrees on the dynamic loft. And you'll notice that was my highest carry distance of the day at 185. 
The descent angle was still okay. It still came in at 44 degrees. Don't want it to be too much lower than this, so this is probably the limit that I would need to com compress the ball. I got that one a little bit heavy. So that was 23 degrees on the dynamic loft, but got away with it. Still a touch further than my normal carry distance. That one felt like it hit that solid. That was 21 degrees on the dynamic loft, and that carried about 184. Definitely a lot lower on the screen again. 21 degrees on the dynamic loft. And it's going to be harder for me to get any lower than that. Uh, the only way I would get lower dynamic loft than 20 or 21 would be through the use of a game improvement iron. Because we know those are a little more loft jacked, dare I say it. Yeah, I didn't quite catch that one, left that face a little bit open. But even still, leaving the face open, 22 degrees on the dynamic loft. Why don't we take a look at these numbers and just see the difference in dynamic loft. Okay, so quickly going over dynamic loft. So we can see that the club speed really didn't change, still swinging about 90 miles an hour when I presented more loft on the club at impact. So higher dynamic loft, the efficiency, efficiency rating went down 1.28 versus 135, 136. Um, you can see dynamic loft changes. You know, It's harder for me to really over compress it because I already compressed the ball fairly decently at 25. Got it down to 21 to get a little bit more efficiency in ball speed. But you can see when I left the face, well, I increased more loft at impact, we significantly increased the, the dynamic loft. If we look at the ball data, you can see the biggest change is ball speed. So you can see the ball speed changed from and basically 122 to 126 to 116. So big change in ball speed, even though I was playing with the same club speed. Launch angle was higher with more dynamic loft, go figure, more loft, higher launch angle. It's more spin on the golf ball. But the big takeaway is the distance. So we can see that I lost, call it around about 20 yards on carry distance and you can see about 30 yards on total distance when it came to improving dynamic loft. So if you're flipping at the golf ball, definitely want to figure out dynamic loft. Well, in conclusion, more club speed equals more potential distance. If you're efficient with your golf swing, when you increase club speed, you will hit the golf ball farther. I do recommend to increase that club speed through not only strength training, flexibility, technique to work on getting through the golf ball, but also overspeed training. I would highly recommend looking at Ripstick Golf. I actually have partnered with them so you can save 15% off if you use the code TCGOLF15. Um, that way you're able to save a little bit of money, but I do recommend some overspeed training and I will get to that in more videos in the future. The second part, definitely was dynamic loft. So if you present too much loft on the club at impact versus too little, that's also going to influence the way the trajectory the ball flies to get an optimal carry and total distance. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to this channel. Also, let me know what other videos you want to see in the future. Please like the video as well. Have a great day.